Hi, this is Jen again. Today we're going to touch on the topics uh, at the property prices and whether is it the right time to come into the property markets now because I've heard so many comments that property prices are all time high now and probably is not the right time to come in. So let's touch on a few factors that will affect your decisions whether to come into the market now. Okay, there are a few things that will uh, probably let you know that's affecting the property prices. Uh, that is, of course, the latest one is an increase in the interest rate and the, uh, of course, the lack of supplies and inflation and the rise of uh, raw materials increases in the construction costs. And of course, the latest cooling measures that just implemented, how would it affect the prices in Singapore? So let's touch on the increase in interest rate. Okay, for more than a decade, we have seen very low loan interest rate, especially for property loan in Singapore. As I'm going to show you the graph here, you can see actually the prices indicated here is actually a show between the property index against the interest rate for the last decades or more. Okay, so the blue dot line actually indicate the property price index and the yellow or the orange color indicate the interest rate. So you can see uh, at a certain times during the times between 2009 to 2014, our bank interest rate is almost at zero. So that was very, very cheap uh, cost for people to invest in the property and acquire the bank loan. So that's why we actually basically at that time, we've seen a lot of new investors come into the market. With the inflation uh, keep increasing higher and higher, Actually, the Fed and the government in Singapore has increased the interest rate to dampen the inflation. Okay, with this increase in interest rate, it also leads to increase in owning the property costs. So, will this dampen the demand for property and lead to a price drop? Okay, let's look at other factors that may affect the property prices also. One main factor uh, that affects the property price is the supplies in the market. Okay, let's look at the new launch markets, whatever is uh, available now for sales. We know the figure is around 14,000 plus units only. From the past transactions history, we can see averagely about 10,000 of units can be absorbed by the market. So that means to say this 14,000 14, plus units will be, you know, out of this, 10,000 will be sold within the next one year. So you can do your calculations, how much is left after this 10,000 is sold. What does it mean? It means the developers have to go out and source for more land to top up the inventories and go back into the markets so that there is more supplies to let the buyer buy. And this will lead to a price bidding war because most of the developers is running out of the inventories. As we can see, the last bid in the OCR Lentor Avenue uh, the price that uh, successfully bid was 1,127 per square foot per plot ratios. It means that after adding the construction costs, adding the other fees, plus a little bit of profits, the developer have to sell between 2,000 to 2,001 per square foot. And that I'm mentioning is OCR, means outside of core region. So this actually makes the recent launch, the Piccadilly Grant, uh, in the ASEA, which is the rest of core regions, at 2001 to 2002 per square foot on average sales price, they sold 77% on the first day of launch. That's no surprise. The next factors that affect the property price is the inflation. Okay, we all know that construction costs has actually increased since the pandemic. Due to labor shortage, there's a big increase in wages. And of course, the raw material like the steel, soils, all have increased due to some sort of logistic problem. And the Ukraine-Russian war has actually worsened it because they are the biggest producer for oil and of course the fertilizer. The fertilizers that actually goes into growing the crops that put as food to you. So the vendors for this cannot absorb anymore the cost. So they have to put up the cost add on to to give it to the consumers. So it goes to the same for the property price. The developers cannot absorb all these costs. It will go back into the sales of the property prices. 
So we are expecting the property prices to keep increasing if the inflation is worsened. Another factor that affect the property prices is of course the demand. Due to the lack of new projects units in the market, the resale market has actually seen a bumper growth of 10.6% in year 2021. And this increase in prices is due to several factors. One of them is there's a massive inflow of funds coming from the affluent China Chinese setting up family office in Singapore. Another one is a pan of demand from the HDB upgraders, which sees a booming HDB prices going up. So that's why they all come into here. Another factor is of course the economy recoveries and also the construction delays. All these actually contributes to higher demands for more resales units in the market. That's why we see such a big growth and I see that this will continue in the rest of 2022. Okay, the massive increase in the rentals doesn't help too because more owners are hanging on to their units instead of selling. Okay, and why is that an increase of rental? Several factors of course. One is the opening of the borders where more are coming back to Singapore to work and live. Another one is also due to the HDB upgrader because they will sell and then rent before they buy another unit. Why so? Because they want to avoid paying the ABSD. And due to the construction delays, all these renters are holding the units, renting for a longer time and that's why it reduces the surprise, increasing the demand. Many of my seasoned investors have been complaining to me that property market in Singapore is not as lucrative as it was like in the 90s and the early 2000s. Well, I have to agree and also dispute at the same time. Okay, right, because during the 90s and the early 2000s, there is no rules of how many you can own or how many properties you can own. Like there's no TDSR, there's no ABSD, there's no cooling period. So that means to say a rich investor can buy as many properties with very low deposit and leverage very high on the bank loan. That leads to excessive speculations and eventually led to a lot of property downturns with a few events that happens in the world and also maybe just locally. So I'm going to show you this graph. You can see since SARS, the SARS times, the market was very all-time low. And after that, it picks up. And speculation starts to come in because without the rulings, anybody can just buy with very low deposit and leveraging very high. So and during the global crisis in year 2007, there was a massive decline and a lot of people lost money. Okay. And, but then the downturn actually kind of uh, very short because there's a lot of influx of funds coming to Singapore again at a time. And that led to another excessive speculations, okay, which actually massively increased the uh, prices of property. So when the government came in with a lot of cooling measures uh, since 2011, it did not did much to dampen the property market until the major one that the TDSR was implemented in year 2013. After that, the property market sort of adjusts and corrects itself and then it becoming more stable. Okay, so you can see the next graph. We can see since after the TDSR has been implemented, the property price more or less has stabilized even though it's increasing. We can see that after even through the pandemic, we don't see a massive decline in the property market. Why? Because there is already a lot of speculations being cut off. So people who are owning the property markets are more stable financially. So they can hang on to the unit without dumping the units in the market. And also recent uh, the Ukraine and Russia war, we can see that property market is still doing very healthily. Cooling measures implemented through the years has cut out a lot of excessive speculations and stabilized the property market. So safety net has been in place even like major events like the COVID-19 pandemics, the Ukraine-Russian war and the massive inflation are unlikely to affect the property prices or even cause a crash like the ones in the 90s and early 2000s. Okay, the foreigners, as we know, they are coming to Singapore and don't you expect them to buy our properties, drive up the demands and deplete the supply further? Is this a good time to enter into the market now before the next wave? I have to put a caveat here. Even though 
you think that it is sure win investment, always invest within your means. And if you want to have an accurate calculations on whether are you investing within your means, feel free to contact me. I'm Jen, Jen Tan Property. Always love to hear from you.